Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Racha Kodash, and up honor to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace, love, salutations, and blessings to the house of David, which is the elect. And I just want to do a lesson, Lord willing, it be edifying unto the elect um, on the uh, characteristics of a uh, leader. Okay, um, you know, the difference between being <clears throat> being a boss or and being a leader. And, um, you know, there's a, a meme, you know, I saw, f you know, a while ago, and I don't know if I ever did a video on it, but um, it just, you know, through the spirit, it popped back up into my mind, um, which, you know, uh, shows the different um, positions of a, a boss versus a leader. And um, I just want to read a few of the characteristics, right, of the qualities, rather, because what... What Yahweh um, showed was how to be a leader, all right? Uh, King David was a leader, which is why the Lord said that he was a man after his own heart, all right? But ultimately, as we know, Yahweh is the Lord of, of David, okay? He's the Lord of King David, and even David acknowledged that in Psalms 110, right? As the king, right? He said, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit down on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. OK, and, um, and another characteristic of uh, um, David was the fact that, as it says in the scripture, uh, let me see if I can get it real quick. Um, that David went in and out uh, amongst the people. OK, um, and that was something that makes you relatable, you know, um, as being a, a leader. Right. And all of us, you know, brothers, you know, elders, bishops. Uh, prophets, priests, you know, all of the, the servants of Yahweh Bashim that, that are out on the front line. All right. Even, you know, us saying that is the, um, the, the characteristics or the qualities of being a true um, leader, because a true leader would be out in the front. OK, uh, a, a boss or somebody who, you know, wants to be a, a, a dictator, so to speak would be the ones that are behind the, the lines, right? And something I was just, you know, thinking about even in this world, um, back in the ancient times, even amongst Esau's kingdom, like for instance, um, Alexander the Greek, right? Um, he was a king, but he was out in, out in the battlefield, right? He was out fighting with his uh, uh, soldiers, right? As we know, the kings in the ancient times um, amongst Israel, like King David, uh, uh, Josiah, other kings, even wicked kings, you know, they went out to battle with their soldiers, right? So, like I said, like even amongst Esau's um, uh, uh, empires in the in, in the ancient times, rather, you would have the ruler go out amongst the uh, the soldiers to go fight and lead the charge. But now, as we see, um. Esau and his kingdom has become so uh, uh, soft, right, and, and lack the qualities of true leadership that your so-called commander in chief never will see a battlefield. All right. Um, I, I remember hearing this quote that said um, old uh, old men determine wars or start wars, but it is the young men that fight wars. All right. And, and you we see that how, you know, you have Biden and Trump and Bush and Obama. These men were called commander in chiefs. But and they would, you know, say, oh, we're going to war, but they would never be the ones that that would be out on the, on the battlefield. Right. They would be, never be the ones that be out there risking their lives. You see, like even with the, the uh, so-called pope, he goes out and. Um, and, and has, you know, a uh, uh, bulletproof, you know, screen. I don't know if he even still does it anymore, but, you know, he, they don't put their lives on the line. And that's why the scriptures talks about the men that has with their life. All right. Yahweh Shai, he himself, but even before he actually got put to death, he has it his life. He was out amongst the people. Right. That's why people were, had the, had the uh, mindset to try to stone him. You see him being a king, he wasn't in a position to where he was saying, oh, you know, I'm just going to go. I'm going to go be be somewhere far. And I just want y'all to tell it. No, how wish I was amongst the people. Right. 
in, instead of so much so that you had a woman that believed in, 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 in him so much that she grasped the opportunity just to touch his, uh, the hem of his garment. And why was she able to do that? Because he was amongst the people. You see, a true leader would be somebody that is um, uh, relatable, somebody that show, uh, shows you how to do things, right? And that tells you how to do things, all right? And you have a lot of these men that claim to be teachers, claim to be men of the Lord, and they don't possess the actual qualities of doing so, you know? And just one thing that comes to my mind is the whole Passover that the IUIC had. Um, I don't even know if it was a Passover or not, but that whole thing where uh, Bishop Nathaniel came out and, and you know, like a like a wrestler, he had his name announced, and you know, he he was uh, running down the, the 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 stage, and everybody was on the side, just you know, glorifying him and things of that nature. Where um, the scripture says, let me get this one scripture real quick. And then I get the other one, the wisdom of Solomon, chapter six, verse um, seven. It says, for he is Lord over all. Speaking about Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, um, for he which is Lord over all shall fear no man's person. Neither shall he stand in awe of any man's greatness. For he hath made all he hath made the small and great and careth for all alike. All right, so the so the heavenly Father, uh, Bashem Yahweh doesn't stand in awe of any man's greatness. When you get exalted in this, in, in you know, on the earth, <laughs> it, that doesn't do anything to the Lord. The Lord is not looking like, oh man, you know, that's a great wow. I'm, that's I'm so shocked. I'm so I'm so uh, uh, awed by this person. No, all right, Yahweh Shai himself didn't even come in that type of regard. Right. And he was perfect. He was without sin. He was blameless. He was faultless. But yet he came uh, humble. He came lowly. He came meek. All right. He came to show the way, not to tell you, or oh, you know, this is just walk this way. You no, know, he showed us how to walk. All right. And that is the, the true, uh, you know, uh, that's a true leader right there. All right. A true leader doesn't demand respect. A true leader earns respect. A true leader doesn't have to say, oh, I'm a leader. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm this, I'm that. All right. It, it would be showcased by your actions. It would be showcased by the way that you conduct yourself. All right. So let's get this um, here in the book of first Samuel chapter 18, verse 16. It says, um, it says, but, he, but all of Israel and Judah loved David because he went out and came in before them. All right. He went out and came in before them. He was somebody, like I said, that that led. He wasn't somebody that was pointing the finger and saying, you do this and you do. Now, of course, as a leader, you do have that 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 rank. You have that um, that. Yeah, that rank to to. Uh, show people and, and, and tell people what to do. But when you are a true leader, when you're telling somebody what to do, they will be more so ready and willing to listen because you're not doing it in a uh, tyrannical uh, way. And, and really, you're telling them what to do because you've done it and you've showed them. So now they seen that, OK, he's done it this way. I've seen him you know, a uh, uh, maneuver like this. So let me listen to his wisdom. Okay. On the matter, because I know that he has that quality or that characteristic in that regard. Okay. And that is how you earn the title of being a leader. That is how you earn the title of, you know, being someone that uh, people will listen to. You see? So, Let's get this also in. Um, let's get this here in the book of First Peter, chapter five, verse one, it says the elders which I uh, which are among you, I exhort whom am also an elder 
and a witness of the sufferings of Hamashiach and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of the Most High, which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for fruit, uh, filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. All right. So as a as a, a first and foremost, a servant of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, right, a minister, right. Our job is to actually serve, right. Our job is to to minister, is to be a a, a help unto the Lord's sheep. Remember, we're not. This isn't our sheep. This isn't our our uh, business. Okay, this is the business of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. The one who, you know, uh, Yahweh Shai's uh, uh, body. This is Yahweh Shai's sheep. So you so you can't have in the mind of, of being a boss over them because you're not the boss of them. Right. The scripture says that, uh, you know, we um, uh, Paul said it. Let me get that as well, that we are all brethren, all brethren. Right. I believe it's in first Corinthians. Uh, so bear with me. First Corinthians, the third chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Um, so I can, you know, not that. So I saw you just bear with me. Ye all brethren. Come on. This is is it second Corinthians? Oh, you know what? For now, um nope, let me just let me just get I know I just literally just seen it. Um, yeah, that's a uh, that's crazy. I can't find it right now. Um, but nonetheless, let me keep reading this here. In the book of uh, First Peter, uh, fifth chapter, it says, "Neither, yep, uh, neither being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock." All right, it says in the NLT, "Don't lord it over the people assigned to your care, but lead them by your own good example." All right, leading the people, leading the flock. By our own good example. And that is why the scriptures talks about that we are to be a light unto the world. All right. Being a light means what? That by the, your actions, you showcase how you're supposed to, you know, uh, uh, walk. All right. By your actions, you are able to lead people unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right. Not. By just just being a Lord over it. And when you go into that word Lord um, in this scripture, it says to hold in subjection, to be master of exercise lordship over. All right. And, and that uh, that word master made me think of the scripture here where Yahweh Shai said in Matthew 23, verse eight, it says, but be not called rabbi for one is your master. Hey, this is that's the spirit. This is the scripture I was looking for. Um, for one is your master, even Hamashiach, and all ye are brethren. All right, all ye are brethren, because we only we all only have one one Lord. Okay, that Yahweh in the name of Yahweh shot. Right, the heaven. That's why that's why King David, being the 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 king, he said what the Lord said unto my Lord. So we are all brethren. Now, within that, we have rank for order's sake, okay, which is important. But as being a leader, 
you're not supposed to use that rank to your, uh, you know, to, 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 to put down, all right, or to subject other people underneath you. They should be willingly to, uh, willing to, sub to be subjected underneath you based off of how you conduct yourself, based off of the qualities that you exude. So a couple of the, of the differences um, I was reading here from being a, a leader versus a boss. So it says a boss demands a leader coaches. A boss relies on authority. A leader role models, uh, role models behavior. A boss issues ultimatums. Leaders generate enthusiasm. Bosses uses people. A leader develops people. All right. And, and that right there is something um, that's something uh, 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 of a talking point as well, because being a, a, a head, right, of a, a let's say you're head of a camp, uh, head of a church or whatever you want, you should want the, the men that are underneath you to be able to be on a level, right? You should help them get on a level to where now they are actually developed to being leaders themselves. And it actually makes, you know, your job a lot more easier, right? It makes your job a lot more easier when you develop people, just like if you were in a business. If you are in a business and let's say you are a construction worker and you started this business, but then you hire somebody, right? Now, this person technically is underneath you, but you want to develop them to a point where they can do the job just as good as you. Because now that takes the load off of you and then you can hire another person. And now you have two people, right? You and this other person and y'all both can teach this person. And that'll be a quicker way for that person to get built up. So now before it was just you and this one person that wasn't developed. Now it's you and somebody else that's just as developed as you. And then now you have another person that is now learning twice as fast. You see, and now you get more jobs done. You generate more revenue for the business. Right. And every and y'all all working toward the same common goal. And that's and that's why um, uh, I think one of these examples, it says. Yeah, it says a boss is an individual who is in charge of the employee or an organization. A leader is an individual who possesses the ability to influence and inspire others towards the accomplishment of goals. OK. A true leader inspires others. Yahweh Shai's life is inspirational, all right, for us to want to be upright in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. We want to walk after the ways of Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, all right, which is a, a, a talking point on how these Christians try to say that, oh, you don't have to keep the laws. Well, if you want to live like Yahweh Shai, right, you, he, he kept the laws. Now, of course, we know, and as, you know, brothers have been doing videos that we're not justified by the law, right? But it's our faith, the faith that we have uh, inspires us to want to uh, uh, try to keep the laws, right? To try to live like Yahweh Shah to the best of our abilities while we're in this uh, vile body, while we're in this flesh, okay? And it's because of the uh, uh, leadership that Yahweh Shah exuded that inspires us to go toward that, uh, uh, comp uh, accomplish that goal as well. All right. It says the possesses the ability to influence. Now there's a scripture um, here in the book of Jeremiah, I believe uh, verse 20. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 20 verse. Let's see. Where is it? Um, is it 20? It might be. Okay, uh, Jeremiah chapter 20, I think this is it. 
Yeah, Jeremiah chapter 20, Shalakia, Jeremiah chapter 15, verse uh, uh, 18. It says, I'm going to read this in the NLT. It says, why then does my suffering continue? Why is my wound so incurable? Your help seems as uncertain as a seasonal brook, like a spring that has gone dry. This is how the Lord responds. This is uh, the point. If you return to me, I will restore you so you can continue to serve me. If you speak good words rather than worthless ones, you will be my spokesman. You must influence them. Do not let them influence you. All right. That is the mindset that we're supposed to have. We're supposed to be influential in righteousness. You know, everybody, you know, on TikTok, social media, they want to be, you know, is that that terminology uh, influencer? Right. But people are influencing people to do vain things, to do folly, to do uh, wickedness. All right. It's, it's only the 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 uh, men of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and the you know and the sisters that teaches you know the young women also because the scripture speaks about that as well as the woman, the age woman, right? And you and, and that doesn't necessarily have to do with your physical age, but your maturity and the truth. You're supposed to teach the young women. And that could be young women that are young in this truth, how to conduct themselves, right? Especially coming from out of this world and seeing all of the folly that this world uh, exhorts, right? We are supposed to, by the way that we conduct ourselves, the, our qualities of our lives are supposed to influence individuals, you know, to uh, do the same, all right? To be uh, uh, doing the works, meet for repentance, Okay. So Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai tells uh, Jeremiah here, here, you must influence them. Do not let them influence you. All right. So let's go back to, uh, you know, this famous, famous one spoken by um, Yahweh Shai in the book of Matthew. And then we'll close it out. Um, actually, let me re finish in first Peter five. I'm going to read three again. It says, neither as being lords over God's heritage but being examples to the flock, all right? And when the chief shepherd shall appear, because remember, we're all brethren and we all ultimately have a shepherd, right? We all ultimately have a master who is Yahweh Shai. So in, in the Lord's, in the heavenly father, Baha Shem Yahweh Shai's um, um, uh, uh, eye, neither, none, none of us is greater than the other, all right? That's why the scripture says that the Lord is not a respecter of person. OK, it says. And so when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder. See, a leader shouldn't have to say, oh, you should, should submit to me. OK, although you have Peter here is telling the churches that are scattered. This is how you're supposed to conduct yourself. The, the elders being an example and then the younger submitting themselves. But as being a, 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 an elder, you wouldn't have to say that directly to somebody. Hey, submit to me. It would be uh, willingly done if that person, you know, the, the, the ones who are, are underneath you, if they are in the right spirit and they see you or do have the right qualities, it would be a natural thing because that would be a wise thing. And that's ultimately what it's about. It's about applying wisdom. It would be wise for a leader to... Uh, be an example, and it will be wise for the younger to listen and to follow the example of the leaders, right? It says, yeah, all of you be subject to one another, all right? In the NLT, it says, in the same way, you younger men must accept the authority of the elders, and all of you serve each other in humility, for God opposes the proud but favors the humble, all right? So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, and at the right time, he will lift you up in honor. All right? That is the mindset. Being humble. The scripture says that the Lord is nigh unto the humble, right? But he resisteth the proud. So being humble is how you get wisdom, right? Being humble is ultimately, as it says, and then uh, um, be, Salaki, being humble allows you to receive wisdom and wisdom bringeth forth a kingdom, as it says in Wisdom of Solomon, the sixth chapter. 
And guess what? Wisdom, humble, it will humble you at first. The way that in order to, uh, to, to get uh, wisdom, you got to get humbled, right? You have to, uh, as the scripture says, before honor comes humility, right? So here in the book of Matthew, and we'll close it out with that. Um, Yahweh Shai says this, uh, Matthew 20, verse 25, but Yahweh Shai called, uh, to, uh, called them unto him and said, ye know that the princes of the Gentiles exercise dominion over them, right? Lordship. And they that are great in, uh, and they that are great exercise authority upon them, but it's so, it shall not so be among you, but whosoever will be great among you, let him be your minister. Okay. The ones who are great, let him be your minister. And, and being great, meaning what? You being in a, a, a position of a, of, a, uh, of a leadership role, right? You being in a position of having, you know, uh, uh, men that are looking up to you, okay? In the spiritual sense. You don't use that, that position to be tyrannical. You don't use that position to, to uh, have a lordship and, and hang it over brothers' heads, right? You, you have that position, so that you can help, all right, the, the, the ones who are underneath you. Because even as it says here in the book of Luke, um, I believe this is book of Luke, chapter 12, verse <clears throat> Luke, chapter 12, verse uh, 48, it says, but he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes for whom so much for whosoever much is given of him shall much be required and to whom men have committed much of him they will ask the more right in the NLT it says but someone who does not know and then does something wrong will be punished only lightly when someone has been given much much will be required in return and when someone has been entrusted with much, even more will be required. All right. So that is the position of being, you know, a, a, a leader. When you're in that role, you have been given much. The Lord blesses you with uh, uh, more, you know, wisdom. He blesses you with more uh, temperament, self, you know, self-control. He blesses you with uh, more experience. OK. And those things are, are given unto you through your afflictions and through your trials and through the things that you go through. And you're supposed to use those things not to say, oh, I'm, a, I'm an elder, I'm a leader, I'm this, I'm that. No, you, you, you go through those things. You have those uh, uh, attributes, those virtues, so that you can use it to better and develop the younger uh, brothers and the, the sheep that are, uh, that are underneath you. And that's why it says to whom much is given, much is required in return. We're given certain things, right? We're given those qualities so that we can use them and be an example, right? Uh, 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 unto the flock with those things, with those virtues. Because just like how the Lord gave you those virtues, he can take it away from you. All right. He can take those things away from you. And then ultimately you'll be casted out. All right. So. You know, and, and it's and it's a, a uh, it's a thing where brothers have seen that, right? You know, we have experienced seeing certain men be in a position of leadership and use it as a lordship. And ultimately, what will the Lord do? He will get he'll get rid of you. All right, and that is a scary thing. The Lord will get rid of you, and and you being a, a leader. And you getting casted out of your of, of the own of your own body, that's like being a head and your head getting chopped off. <laughs> right? See, the Lord, if you did that to an actual body, then the body would be dead. But in the spiritual sense, the Lord could just replace the head. And and the body will work even better. Okay? The body will work even better by replacing the head. So, you know. That's pretty much it on that. I just want to touch on it. Lord willing, it was um, edifying unto the elect, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Bahashim Rakakwadash. Shalom.